Hi everyone, I'm Arias from Technical University of Brunswick in Germany and I'm going to present you You Can Debug This, detecting JavaScript anti-debugging techniques in the wild. So for motivation, if you want to do a static analysis of JavaScript, um, you might have known this is very hard. Um, JavaScript uh, has no type information, it is usually minified, sometimes even obfuscated, and also the dynamic creation of new code is very common, so you have constructs like eval which take a string and then transform that into new code. So here's an example of a very typical code of a website. Um, you basically can't read it, especially if you want to like inspect this manually and make sense of all the variables, you're gonna have a very hard time, right? So what you usually do is instead open the website in your browser and try to figure out what's happening dynamically. So this dynamic analysis needs a real browser. So you can't just go ahead and download the JavaScript code and run it locally, let's say in Node.js. Because the problem is the code will expect a DOM, so it might create new elements like an iframe object with a script source, and then network requests gonna get executed and this uh, new code will be added. And then there's also the thing that code written for the web expects non-standard objects. So it will expect something like the location object to be present in the global window scope. And this location object is part of every browser window but it's not part of the standard specification, so it will not be part of your Node.js system. So you're gonna need a real browser if you want to analyze a website, which actually makes a lot of sense, I think. So how, how would you go about this? Well, you usually open the dev tools. Uh, the dev tools or developer tools are an integrated tool which helps you debugging a website. So um, as you might see here, uh, I can look at the source code in the sources tab, I can also run new code, there's the console, and all the function that the website defines are already present here, so I can I can call a function that the website created. Um, I can also look at, into the DOM and uh, modify elements there. I can look at the network requests, including all the relevant headers. Uh, I can also set breakpoints here in the sources tab and single step through the code. So it's really like a, a real debugger for, for your browser and a very, very useful tool. So what's the problem with this? Well, if you do dynamic analysis in a real browser, then that gives the website a lot of power over you and especially your results. And uh, if the website doesn't want to get analyzed, is what we call anti-debugging, if it tries to prevent this or hinder this or annoy you. And I think the best way to show you is with a real example. So I've prepared a demo. Um, we have this little website here and Let's say I want to analyze this website because it does an annoying pop-up and I want to try to figure out what's going on there. So I'm going to open the DevTools uh, with the shortcut and I want to look at the code. But what happens is suddenly I, I get a breakpoint. So the, the website is paused in debugger and um, I, can, I can try to continue this execution but it always ends up in this debugger loop. So we have, a, we have this statement here which just says debugger and uh, what it does is it creates a breakpoint, even if I didn't want it to create a breakpoint here. But um, somebody modified the website code in this way that it constantly uh, creates new anonymous functions, uh, which have this debugger statement here. And as long as the dev tools are closed, everything works fine. So, I mean, this website has no features, but <laughs> ignore this for a moment. Um, I could continue use the, to use the website normally, um, but as soon as somebody wants to look into the code, they get these annoying breakpoints everywhere and you can't really just do anything. So that's that's the problem. And um, what we did is a study on that. So we wanted to know like how many websites uh, abuse these little features to annoy people and prevent uh, somebody to analyze the website. So we did a crawl of uh, 1 million websites, including also some subpages. So we didn't just look at the front page, but we also randomly selected a few links. And then we uh, visited every website and collected some indicators for one or more techniques. So I just shown you one technique. Um, there are also a few others, which I can't get, get into detail in this talk, but um, we looked at uh, six techniques in the beginning and just collected some information like, do they seem to be present? Like, are, are there any breakpoints triggered if we attach a debugger? And um, for this particular example, we found that around 1,100 websites actually called at least one debugger or more, so had this debugger statement in, in their code. And it was also executed, so we did a dynamic analysis. 
And we also found that around half of them only did it if we actually visit a page beyond the front page. Um, but the thing is, if they just trigger one breakpoint, I, I'm not already claiming this is anti-debugging. So it could just be there is a forgotten debugger statement somewhere in the code. But as, as long as it's not constantly triggered again and again, it's not really a problem, right? So what we did is we also analyzed the severity of the different techniques. So in this case, um, what you can see in this graph is the frequency or the amount of breakpoints within a particular site. And uh, the whole bar represents all the 1,100 sites um, that had any breakpoint. So um, this red part here means that around uh, uh, more than a quarter of the websites uh, had only one breakpoint triggered. So we visited the website, waited a few seconds, and there was only one breakpoint. So these seem to be not really intentional, right? And then here in between, we have those websites which had two or three or maybe four to five or even uh, up to 20 breakpoints. So here it's it gets a bit murky. It's not really clear, like, is, is five breakpoints intentional or not? It's a bit hard to say. But then we also have these uh, more than half of the websites, which triggered more than 20 breakpoints, where it suddenly becomes very clear, like, if, if we visit, a, if we are three seconds on this website and it triggers, like, 20 breakpoints, there's really something shady going on. Um, so we use this information and um, we determine the severity score. So. For this severity score, it makes a difference if you trigger only one breakpoint once, or if you trigger it like really, really often, as we've seen in the graph above. And then um, we also compare triggering breakpoints to the other five techniques, which I haven't introduced yet. Um, but some of them are less intrusive, like this breakpoint is really annoying, so it might count for more than something else. And then we also look at the fact that some of these websites are use, using multiple different techniques at the same time, where another website might just only use one. So if you use multiple at the same time, that's obviously more severe. And um, then we took the 2,000 most severe websites with, like according to our score, the most severe anti-bugging. And um, we did some more additional analysis. So for that, the setup was a bit more complicated. We um, visited the website once and use the tool called web page replay, which is basically a proxy. And uh, we record this visit to the website and try to make that um, deterministically replay. So we record it once and then we replay it a lot of times and we constantly measure the code coverage. So what, what lines of JavaScript code get executed and which lines don't get executed. And if you do this often enough, um, there's this problem that there might be some timing uh, differences, like something loads faster if we load it once and then loads slower if you load it another time. So, but after a while, like if you replay this website a lot of times, like if you load it 20 times or more, then at some point there's no new code that gets executed. So we've basically seen all, all the things that could happen while we load the website. Um, because we already we are always reload it from this proxy, so the server does does not send new data, and after a while, no new no new code gets executed on the client side. And then what we do is kind of like we open we appear to open the dev tools, and then look in if this changes something. So so why this complicated setup? Well, because it allows us to detect to detect three additional techniques which we couldn't detect if we just visit the website once. And um, I want to show you an example of how this could work. Um, this is obviously just a simplified constructed example. But what you could do as an attacker is you could measure the current time. So performance now is basically a timestamp. And then you could uh, run this debugger statement. And we've seen that as, as long as the dev tools are closed, as long as, as there's no debugger attached, then um, this statement does not have an effect. So the the second um, time we we uh, take a break uh, sorry we measure the current time or get a timestamp um, will be very close to the first time because the statement did not have an effect and um, but on the other hand if somebody somebody opens the dev tools um, then the breakpoint will trigger and then we get this little annoying box and um, while you're not clicking on continue with the execution um, this will stall this ex this uh, statement. So there's really a delay from the start 
uh, of this function to the second time we uh, take the current timestamp. And if we compare those two, and if there's like a, a non-significant delay, let's say more than 100 milliseconds, then we know, okay, somebody just attached the debugger and the dev tools are open, which, which is a very useful if you know this is an attacker, because that means you can now make your website behave differently if somebody attaches a debugger. So you might hide your malicious code, you might delete actually functions or stuff from the DOM, so you can hide stuff. And um, so we ran this experiment with our uh, replay setup, and we found that around 230 sites of the 2,000 most severe anti-debugging actually also uh, executed different code when under analysis. So what have you seen so far? Well, um, in the paper, we actually cover nine techniques. I couldn't show you all of them. Uh, some of them just impede the analysis, like they annoy you with, they prevent some uh, useful shortcuts, they might trigger breakpoints, they might clear the console and so on. They might also alter uh, the behavior of certain functions that you expect, you expect them to do one thing, but then they suddenly do another thing. For example, the built into strings function might be overwritten. And then there's also these uh, techniques that detect that you have the dev tools open, which uh, I showed you just one, but there are actually five of them. And there's even more stuff in the paper. So we have these nine techniques. I've only shown you two. We also do a systemization of techniques. We do many an additional analysis. We also discuss if this might be related to malicious activity or to intellectual property protection. And we even uh, have a test bed. So you can just visit this website and um, can try all the techniques for yourself. The demo that I showed you is also part of this test bed. So please go ahead, visit this website and have some fun. And uh, that already concludes my talk. Thank you for listening. I'm now open for questions and you also con can contact me later uh, via email or Twitter.